Hello Saints, this is Sean Cox from What Does Jesus Look Like? We'll do a little scripture reading today out of Matthew 25 verses 31 through, 40, through 46. Lord Jesus, bless the reading of this word. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will come to those on his right hand. Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick, sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hunger and feed you? Or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and you in and or naked clothe you? When did you, we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer. And say to them, Assuredly I say to you, and as much as you did as to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me sick and in prison and you do not visit me then they also will answer him saying Lord when do we see you hunger or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison it, it did not minister to you then he will answer them saying surely I say to you as much as you did not do this to one of the least of these you do not do this to me and these will go into everlasting punishment but the righteous into eternal life that section of scripture, saints, is the judgment, man. Sheeps and the goats, the two kingdoms, man. This little talk here, we're going to talk about the characteristics of the kingdom, man. Huh. What does it say here, saints? See, we talk all the time about relationships. I talk to you guys about relationships, man. Because that's really what matters in this world. People will tell you we're under grace. We're not judged by the things we do, but we are, saints. We are judged by the things we do, man. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sum total of who we are, is our relationships and how we treat our fellow man. If you go around being a dirt bag, and you treat your, treat your loved ones, you know people. If you treat people close to you good and everybody else bad, well, you're still a dirt bag. That ain't what God asked us to do, man. It's what's the what's the Ten Commandments hang on, man? Huh? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength, and love the neighbor as yourself. The first four, the vertical, our relationship with him, the last six, our relationship with man. I can't think of a sadder section of scripture, man, than to have love walked out. That's who Jesus is, man. He's love walked out. Depart from me, man. I never knew you, man. Basically, that's what that's saying right there. He's telling those, those ones, because when I was hungry, you never fed me. When I was sick, you never, you never was there. <laughs> when I was in prison, you never came there either. You was ne I never knew you, man. Depart from me, man. Well, you know what Jesus is telling you that? Can you think of a? a can you hear it from anybody? Full of more love than that. If he's telling you he didn't know you, well, you're a dirtbag, man. It is. That's 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 the sum total of who you are. There's nothing good in you, because the Lord Jesus, man, His love and mercy have no bounds. <laughs> the places He'll go to get you out of the holes, the darkness. Well, there's not words to describe where He'll go, or the or the limit, the the, the list of how far He'll go. And what and the, 
and a pile of vomit he'll lay in to get you out of, man. That's the facts of it, man. Well, you go around this world, man, and you want to know what God is and where God is and who He is, and look around, man. Follow the helpers, man. Follow the people that are out here helping other people, man. Feed, their, feed the homeless. Visit those in prison. Go into the elderly, old folks' home. Go into the hospital to visit the sick. There's a list of a million things, uh, of good things you could be doing out here. But it all, it all has to do with a relationship with our brother, man, and helping our fellow man, guys. I can't stress it enough to you how important it really is, man. Our relationships with others, man, and it says who we are, man. If we're just sitting in a pew playing church so we can sit down and look at down at the end of our nose at others and think we're better some kind of way than them because we know more of this book than they do or, or we grew up around this book or we just think we got some kind of special. Uh, we're just special. Kind of like the Israelites. They thought they was special. Well, what they was was special. They were supposed to be the light to the whole world to show what the love of love of God was. Instead, they took the light and held it to themselves, and they made Sabbath and everything else God was a burden to their fellow man. That's what they did. They became a poor representation until eventually they killed him. They killed Christ. And later on, stoned Stephen. And then it was taken away from him forever, the gospel. Yeah, it got took away from him and given to somebody else because they didn't do what the Lord told them to do. See? He told them to share, to be loved, man. The love walked out. But they're the exact opposite of that, man. <laughs> they're Pharisees. Full of rules and regulations, man. Outward, outward religion, man. Dead inside. Rock in here, man. And that's all religion is. Without love. Without this book. Without the love of Christ. Religion is just an outward form, man. It's just emptiness, man. You, you, it's all these things, these and thous, the do's and don'ts, the checklist Christian. Why well, was that Christian before, man? And I didn't help my brother, and I didn't think about nobody else. I thought about myself and how I could stay clean, and stay away from the dirt of the world, and not be a partaker of the world, and not. Well, you, I still don't want to partake in those things. I don't want to fill my head with emptiness of, of the enemy lies. But. That doesn't mean I can I have to I hate my brother. That I can't help my brother. That I can't go out here and hug my brother. <laughs> and I do. I feed the homeless here in Spokane, Washington, man. Me and my wife. We go out, we we, we make hygiene kicks and we, and we feed the homeless, man. We take a peanut butter and jellies. We got steps to Christ now. We give them some Bible tracks. We give them some water. Some faith, hope, and love, man. Now I don't sit out there on the streets and preach to them. Cause they're on the street, man. They're living in they're living in a tent on the on the side of the road. I'm out there telling them they're loved. That somebody's thinking about them, man. That God cares about them, man. And let the Holy Spirit lead them to read that steps to Christ and those Bible tracts, and hopefully lead them to believe in them, man. If they don't already, man. Because a lot of them they survived all those nights out on them streets because of God. And they know it, man. They know He's real. Even in their misery, pain, they know He's real, man. If we go through life, man, and we, we drive our vehicle and our shiny stuff, and we just keep it to ourselves, man, well, what kind of existence is that, man? Who are we passing that on to? You know my old man used to tell me, saints? You'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. And you know what? He's right. I'm 49 years old, man. I ain't never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. I ain't. You ain't going to take the stuff with you. It's, it's fine to have stuff and things and try to work your... <laughs> what's the point of working your whole life for a retirement that, that you die a year after you make retirement and you never... You see what I'm saying? I, I think maybe you get the point of what I'm saying here. Man. Money and things are a means to an end. Enjoy them while you're here. But don't make them your God. Because God will hold you accountable for that, man. If you love things more than you did people, what do you think that you you think that you're gonna have a relationship with God in heaven or go to heaven? Or, I mean, seriously, 
if your whole life revolved around the kingdom of yourself, I, be myself and I, and believe me, saints, <laughs> I spent decades with that, man. The American dream, chasing it. What's the American dream, saints? What is it? Get rich, fill your bank account, own a house. Seriously, it's all about you, ain't it? The great the American dream. Well, that's, a, <laughs> that's the American lie. It's vapor, man. It is. Loving your brother, man. Helping your brother out of the ditch. Lifting your brother up. Loving your brother. That's the American dream. That's what God's dream for you is, man. Help your fellow man. Love him, man. You know why? Because Jesus loves you, man. And he gives you all those power. He gives you this power freely to go give it away, man. He did. He does every when you ask God to come into your life, He fills you up with His His Holy Ghost and His love, and it inoculates you, man. It starts cleaning you out, refining you. It gets the garbage, the hate, the resentment, the pain, the agony. The more truth you tell, the cleaner you get. The more honest you are, the more like Christ you are. The more He could use you. And the biggest thing is being honest and broken, man. And to get there. It starts with a, a a prayer to ask him in. A prayer to say, forgive me for my sins, man. Maybe you go read that Revelation 3.20. He's knocking at the door, you ask him in, man. And then he starts from right there, and he starts cleaning you up and refining you. And the next thing you know, you're not thinking about yourself anymore, saints. You're thinking about others, man. Your family, your home, your marriage. The Holy Spirit comes in. Christ comes in. He changes your heart. He affects every single facet of your life, man. And you're doing things you never thought you could do before. Like this, saints. Before I launched this ministry, I had a Facebook page, man. That's it, man. I had a Twitter that I never used. Seriously, I didn't post anywhere. I didn't do anything. I didn't preach to nobody. I might made a put a, a meme up here and a meme up there. I've never done any of this stuff in my life. I never created videos. I never made... Uh, clips together. I've never preached sermons. I don't have no PhD in Bible. No college degrees. What I have is, is life lessons, man. Yeah, I've been through it, man. Every way you can think about it. And I've tried all the enemy's lies, man. And through my experiences, what the Holy Ghost is, it showed me he's using all those life experiences. And everything I did, and he's turned it from bad to good. From dark to light. Only God can do that, man. Nobody else can. See, I look. I, before I launched this ministry, I was thinking about launching a fishing channel. Yeah, a YouTube fishing channel with my wife. I was going to fish and try to sneak a Bible verse in here or there or something because I thought that was the best I could do for Christ, man. Seriously, I really did. And look what I'm doing, man. I ain't doing nothing like that. I'm preaching, man. I'm doing three-minute videos that he gave me a dream for to save people's life. If you had three minutes to save somebody's life, what would you say? What would you do? What does Jesus look like? Well, that's this ministry. That's these videos. Every three-minute one is, is a 911. Save your soul. Grab the Word of God. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Upon two to three witnesses. That's how we make doctrine. Repeat and enlarge. And the Holy Spirit expand this book and make it shine like, like the Holy Grail, like, like you've never seen something shine. Like emeralds, diamonds, sapphires. And it'll make you shine like that. That's right. Because when you're an open vessel, the Holy Spirit can pour out you, man. He can use you, man, to reach His people. And each one of these videos is a 911 to whatever people that he's trying to reach, man. And I know that. I've accepted that. A lot of times I'll, I'll do a, a sermon and think, why did I do that? Or why did I talk on that? Or why did I? It's because the Spirit told me to. And that's why I'm doing this talk today, saints. It is. That's why I read about the sheep to the goats, the Son of Man, Jesus, Jesus uh, judging us all, man. But he is. We're under grace. We got law too, saints. The Ten. The Ten Commandments, man. They're binding. They're forever, man. That's his, that's his rules, man. He won't break them for nobody, man. 
like I said earlier, the first four, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength, and love the neighbor as yourself. One's vertical with Father, one's perpendicular with your brother, bud. There's nothing more important than that, bud. If you're in a relationship with the Father, in love with the Father, well, he, you're going to love your fellow man. That's a fact. It's like handy glove, bud. Guys, people run around saying we're under law. We're not under law, we're under grace, man. Well, is it okay to murder? Is it okay to kill? Is it okay to steal? Is it okay to lie? Seriously. There's one commandment they're talking about, saints, that we're not under great, under law anymore, and that's the fourth commandment, the Sabbath commandment. That's the, that's the one, because they don't keep that one, see? They're going to church on Sunday. So when we bring up the commandments, they always want to talk about we're under we're under grace, not law. Well, you go ahead and take all those other Ten Commandments and get rid of them and, not, and tell me it's okay to do them. Go ahead. Go read the Ten Commandments and tell me that's how we should be living, man. We're still, that 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 is eternal law, man. That's forever. Yeah, those, those, those don't end, man. Those ten are forever. Now, the ordinances outside the ark, the 600 and something ordinances that Moses wrote, well, they've all been fulfilled by Christ on the cross, man. That's the ordinances. That's the things, the handwriting that, that was fulfilled by Christ. That he didn't come, come he didn't fulfill the ten. He walked the ten out. He's love walked out. That's what he is, man. He didn't break none of the ten. He gave us a perfect example of how to live. We can live with the power of the Holy Ghost outside of sin, guys. We don't have to sin. <laughs> That's the truth of it. We don't have to, man. We're not helpless. Scripture's clear. The good shepherd, he always leads us out of temptation. He always gives us a way out. It's our choice, man. We don't have to sin. And we don't have to live that wicked life. He'll lead us a way out now. That don't mean we're going to face hard times and temptations. When we hold on to him, man, he gets us through them. No matter what. See? And we can walk around with our head all high. We don't have condemnation. We walk around with all that sin burden on our back. You know why? Because we gave it all to Jesus, man. And we're honest. And when we mess up, we say we're sorry. He picks us up and we keep going forward. Because that's the only way a God of love operates, man. We're moving upward. Onward and upward. That's where we're going to heaven. To be with our king. And every day here, he's removing the dross. Get rid of this beast heart and give it to this Christ heart. And that's what this is about, saints. He loves you, man. Supernatural. Let supernatural come in. You'll be changed forever. Light to dark. Dark to light. Upside down to right side up. That's how he works. King Jesus reigns, man. There's nothing in this world like it. There's nothing you could do to replace it. There's no drugs. There's no relationships. There's no money. Stuff. I I can't tell you. Every form of emptiness I've chased them all, man. Yeah. Yeah. Every sexual sin. Every drug sin. Every <clears throat> adrenaline, adrenaline rush the enemy's had. Every single one of them, man. They all end up the same way. If you ain't dead, you're alone, in a pool of your own blood, with nobody, miserable. <laughs> if you're chasing the, the, the emptiness of the drugs, I mean, seriously, you, you, you're getting up from the drugs, and then, then they start to wear off, and, and, and reality comes back. The misery, pain, and agony never stops. It's a never ending cycle of just misery, man. And that's what he serves to you. Empty promises, empty lies, empty hand. They're always, I, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. And they're all empty, man. They don't mean anything. Give Jesus a try, man. I guarantee you, you won't get the same results that you got from the other side, the other king, the goat side. You don't want to be goats, man. You want to be sheep. The good shepherd, what he's done with you, man, well, you'll know that you meant love, real love, man, pure love. There's nothing like it in this world. And once you know the pure love of Christ, and you see it in your life, and what, it does, what it's done, well, the enemy's done. Satan, he's done.
because everything he brings to you, all the temptations, all of it, you know what it is. You see right through it. You know why? Because you got Holy Ghost glasses, man. You can see through his lies, man. And his fake promises, his backroom deals, his his none of it's true. It's all a magic trick. It's all a lie. False hope. That's what he does, man. He never he never keeps his end of the deal. He'll leave you in a pile of your old blood every time. His best homeboys. Think about him, man. Marilyn Monroe. Elvis Presley. Think about the Daves, man. Tupac, Biggie. Where are they at? How many? Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix. Their name lives on. How'd they die? Their own vomit? On a toilet? Killed? Horrible. Every one of them. That's his ace deuces, man. Well, King Jesus, even the ones, even, even his homeboys, the ones that die, well, he's got some form of reward. He takes care of nobody. He, he ain't leaving nobody to lurch. He's getting all his. All his sheep. Won't one be left behind. Lord Jesus, let them hear while they still can. And please, bless this video. Amen.